Hello, beautiful. Welcome to the United Way. My name is Rob Dukan, an honorary Manchester United fan just like you with someone. I mean, I know some football, but yeah, let's move on. So in this video, we are reacting to Ten Hag's interview with the Times magazine. I know the Times have a they have a paid subscription. Maybe most of you don't have. And I said, I mean, you, we are fans. We we can relate. And, uh, and I wanted to give you my point of view in regards to this interview so guys please make sure you click the like on the video i mean and uh, get involved with the united way we are a small channel we have no competitor we are not youtube doesn't advertise us you know like promote our channel so if you are lucky to come into this channel please help to at least share the channel so we can uh, build up a football manchester united community so let's go straight into it i mean before i start i just want to give myself a tap on my back there is this video if you can see if it's just like where my hands is because there's a green screen here now yeah yeah where i did my top four in the beginning of the video i'll put the link below here I predicted that Manchester United will end the third position and uh, they did even more. They won something. I, I mean, I, 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 I did that prediction based on the way I understand uh, Ten Hag, his serial, serenity in football, the way his methodology and management. And, I, and I'm happy that I got that one right. I've been saying that all this while. And for some of you watching my, who have watched my videos many times, guys, I always put this at times. I uh, this picture about Ten Hag saying Ten Hag has shown he can be Manchester United next Alex Ferguson. He is Manchester United Ten Hag for sure. Well, and um, the reason why I've been posting this is something like a motivation for me as a fan. And I think most of you who have... Uh, uh, some of your, you know, your little magic is something that pulls you to Manchester United. So let's just go straight into the interview. And uh, some of the quotes I'll put it up here. <clears throat> then I talked about, obviously, I mean, Marcus Rashford talked about David De Gea. Yeah, he was asked questions about also Aaron Wambasaka, asked about stopping City for the treble. He talked about his uh, disappointment also not being backed properly in January. And, um, Ten Hag uh, also said something which made me to, I mean, I, I, I just have to get this picture back on Ten Hag. Let me start with this. Ten Hag, he was asked about his team and his way of coaching. And he said it clear that, you know what? We win together, we lose together. And we will try to break this video down so it can take 10 minutes, maximum 15. We live together, we win together, we lose together. He says, I hate listening to ma to managers who always blame players when we lose games. This is very important. This is first management. This is the first quality of being, one of the top three qualities of being a leader, of, you know, to manage. And he said he believes in his management skill. That's why I think, guys, I just hope all of you will really support Ten Hag moving forward. And uh, we'll have a lot of videos on this topic. But uh, yeah, let me get that away. So the topic he said, where well, he talked about also, let's break the first one. He wouldn't, obviously, he talked about Marcus Rashford, uh, saying that Marcus Rashford, he 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 worked a lot with Marcus Rashford. Ten Hag tried to explain uh, also how um, he created an environment for Marcus Rashford to excel. And uh, uh Marcus Rashford picked it up and all Marcus Rashford needed was in order to find a way to in order to excel in the, in this environment and also said fitness was very important. Uh, you can see why Ten Hag was always putting Marcus Rashford on games uh, because he needed uh, that fitness uh, of Marcus Rashford. He talked about the biggest problem and this is a position, this is a point in which most of the fan base have uh, issue with David De Gea. David Gelia, we, he talked. He was asked about David De Gea. You know, there have been a lot of negative uh, trend in regards to David De Gea. You guys know this clearly. And um, Ted Hag said De Gea will be <coughs> United next goalkeeper. Yes, <coughs> but I will not say he will always be <coughs> my number one because in a club like Manchester United, there must be competition in all positions. Spot on. United will play 62 games. Uh, as United will play 62 games this season. That's the next season. Coming season. You can't do it with just 11 players. It is impossible. You need to double positions. You remember when uh, Ole, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was manager for Manchester United? Ole Gunnar Solskjaer could always sit like try to bite his tongue and not answer such questions and just close it. Ten Hag is uh, managing the situation. He is placing the balance between him, him, I mean, he's the speaker, he's been a balance between the management and also the players. 
So he's trying to get a, a good balance between the two sides. Uh, indirectly, talking about his what he thinks he doesn't like. This is basically Ten Hag saying that I need more signings. This is basically Ten Hag expressing himself and saying, we need to get serious. So guys, smash a like on the video for Ten Hag. This is one of, this is the best position I like in this video, in the whole of this, um, uh, one of the best uh, points that I like. So uh, that's what Ten Hag said about that. So let's move forward because we want to do it a little bit quicker. And he was asked a question about how can Ten Hag go to an interview without asking, having a question about Harry Maguay. Harry Maguay, he is the sugar boy for the British media. I think Harry Maguay has a very good PR team that always get him involved in terms of all these uh, all these uh, public um, events. Um, so um, yeah, so uh, <clears throat> Henry Winter asked him uh, in respect to Harry Maguay. He said, uh, uh, you know, he respects Mark Harry Maguay for his professionalism and understand his status as the captain of the club, prominent England uh, international. I told you guys after when the season started, most of you came on our watch along here on the channel and said, oh, Rav, no, why did he give Harry Maguay the captain? So I said, hold on, hold on. I've played football in a very good level. A manager coming to a new club in a new culture needs to give a chance to the player. He said, I, I told you guys, if I, if you, all the videos on the channel, I said, I, I said, Harry Maguire will get himself to the bench. Don't be worried. And it has just come to pass. That's why I always encourage you guys that we should meet up on our watch alongs, smash that like, subscribe to the channel because we will have some a lot of engagement as United are playing. All this trash that Manchester United fan channel, you must be a British guy, you know, to own Manchester United channel or a successful channel. Effort, I don't think so. But coming back to the point, he said yes, but he is a high com. Uh, it is, um, yes, he is a high competition. Uh, yeah, he said yes, but there is a high competition here yeah, with um uh, with um Rafael Veran at the central bank, who is fantastic. He just marked it up. No one is happy in this situation. Ten Hag says uh, he is not as well. He trains always uh, on best levels, so with one hundred percent effort. So he handles that situation well and he is in a manner and his captaincy, he is important for the squad. So Maguire will stay. That was the question. He was asked, so Maguire, will Maguire stay? He said, let's say I am happy he is here and when, <laughs> and when we need him, he, he did his job. But it's also a decision he has to make. You got that answer? This is how a manager speaks. He was asked, so will Maguire stay? He said, let's say I'm happy. Let me just put it this way. I'm happy to see him here, yeah. you know? Yeah, but you know, uh, uh, but it is also a decision he has to make that Maguire has to move on. Maguire has to go to a West Ham or an, uh, an Everton. Maguire has to go to a team that gives him a chance of playing. He has to go to maybe a top 10 team. If anyone comes and give Manchester United Maguire 30 million, pounds at happy days between i i read my way between 30 and 25 million nothing less anything less is a ripoff he's an international he's the captain of the english squad and he needs to be respected in that sense uh so talking about players we go he talked about aaron wambasaka where he said aaron wambasaka lean uh, uh yeah as aaron wambasaka uh, Baka, Basa, as Aaron uh uh one uh, bisaka learns um ten hag uh said this he said he said the psychology of a player out from uh, the back it is very important it's not what i want right <clears throat> is that that is, is very important so he was trying to say uh, aaron wambasaka needs to uh, had an issue in the beginning of the game not only him not playing he has a particular character that ten Hag always saw it and tried to nurture it and when given a, a, a chance aaron wambasaka picked up then there was this question was very important. It was about David, 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 David de Gea. And he said, it's not what... <clears throat> he was asked about David de Gea. He said, uh, yeah, it is not what uh, I want. It is more important in football, right? Uh, so he was asked about David de Gea. This is the quote about David de Gea. It is important. Let me just, uh, if I can get it out here. Uh, sorry, guys. Uh, so, yeah. He was asked about David De Gea. Uh, you know, most of the English press were all the negativity. He said David De Gea will be Manchester United next goalkeeper next season. And uh, yeah, you guys know that United uh, they have been a prize place on um, the Portuguese goalkeeper. Uh, 
uh, that is uh, 75 between 70 and 75 million euros. That's the price to buy. Uh, uh, how do you call this guy? Santos? What's the name of the goalkeeper? The name just went out of my head. He played goalkeeper for the Portuguese national team. I think that Gear will be Gear will be in the Gear season next year. I think it will be a, a very good thing if the Gear has someone who will, they were going to compete for their position. Because if the the Gear does have such a competition, I am very sure that he is going to do well. So he said. Uh, he he talked about. Um, yeah, he talked about that. He he talked about. He said, he said it's not a what I want, right? It was about the gear. Also, he said that the modern game has changed. It's not what I want. It's more what the top football demands today. That's playing. That's what Ten Hag says. That's the, the gear's uh, attribution in terms of playing with his leg. Because uh, he says, I uh, if, if you observe the biggest teams, you have to be capable to playing from the back. And uh, use your keepers as a plus one in your bill of play. That's what he means. Otherwise, it will be very simple for your opposition um, to put you under pressure. You see, so De Gea had uh, to stop or had to step up. Sorry, uh, in a number of games, uh, he's shown progression. So. Um, it is clear. I know some of you are not very happy with the Gia's performance in terms of a goalkeeper, but I think the Gia he will come out fine, clear, and uh, he will um, uh, he will he will train a lot. He will sign a new contract. That's a hundred percent. Well, that's ninety nine percent because on the back, and that's it. So uh, I'll close this also about talking about. Um, there was also this where he talked about uh, Sir Alex Ferguson. He said. Um, he communicates with say Alex Ferguson a lot. Uh, the, that whenever he takes all the good, uh, the good advice, and also he takes all the advice from say, Alex Ferguson as well. But he measures it. You know, he, he he. I mean, you can take the advice, but you have to make the decision. So say as Alex. In short, he, um, what Ten Hag is saying is that Ten Hag, say, Sir Alex Ferguson, has been a very good. Uh, uh, factor for his decision make not his decision making for him to understand the way Manchester United works. So uh, I think that's a fantastic uh, move there because I remember who was that? There was a manager who came who didn't. I think it was uh, Van Gaal. I could understand Van Gaal. He he, Van Gaal wasn't really uh, close to Sir Alex Ferguson. Sir Alex, to be honest, they had just a professional relationship. Which was uh, a big mistake. On the other hand, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was close to Celia Fashion, who had some kind of influence to him, and which was a mistake as well, I think. Yeah, so um, Ten Hag was asked about the nice one. He was asked about this top, um, the three, uh, the treble that City might win. And Ten Hag said this, guys, listen, he was asked about Manchester United beating City so City doesn't win the treble. Ten Hag said it clear. I can't even read this, I know. He said, um, it's not about City getting top, top um, winning top um, um, three three trophies. This is it's about Manchester United winning the FA Cup. And he went there and said, "Yes, I know, I know, I know, I'm about that." But it's not about stopping Man City. City. It's about us winning the FA Cup. We want to build our own legacy and era. This is. I'm closing it here. United wants to be their legacy and era. That is what you you will take. This will be on the thumbnail. We want to build our legacy and an era. This is how you your manager speaks. That motivates. That inspires not only fans, the players in the pitch. I've played football. I've seen some players who are like this. Who gives you that courage? Who hits you hard in order for you to perform? So this was been a fantastic interview by the Times guys. I just said I should run it off with you guys because I know the Times have a big subscription. It's difficult to read all of their stuff so i came out with this uh, idea to, to share this opinion tell me guys what you think about um the interview did you like it sorry for the video it is like 15 minutes i tried to make my videos 10 minutes just give you guys all the infos he also spoke about missing groom which i haven't spoken about here and said the decision was not made by him i think i said about it in the earlier in, in, um, of this video earlier in, early in this video i think missing guru i would say yeah i think missing guru should stay in manchester united Football doesn't have morals. Messi and Giroud didn't kill anyone. If he did kill somebody, he should be in prison. I don't care. Those perfect people who think football, there is no, if he can give you the goods, 
he should stay and play. If he can, if he's not good, I'm interested about players, not mostly about the Amaros. I don't care what you do at home, we care about the pitch. So if Messengero comes in the beginning of the season, make a video, um, get a video out there and ask for forgiveness. Guys, you guys should accept his forgiveness and let him move on in life. There is none of you, you and I, none of us are perfect. So we should leave Lenny Messingley Road in peace. Thanks. I'll close it here. Let me close in the puzzle with a positive word here. We want to build our own legacy and our era. Full stop. Very simple. Guys, it was great speaking to you. Please smash a like on the video. Drop your comments below. Tell me what you think. Thanks for all of you liking this video. You guys are amazing. Thanks for the few subscribers I've had so far. It's important in this channel. We had to go to the US. We couldn't do that because we didn't get meet up with our sponsors. of 10, They needed 10,000 subscribers. We couldn't get it. I, and I, I'm not blaming you. Maybe it's my fault. Anyway, thanks, guys, and talk to you soon, guys.